Block you, bitch, and check your hoe. Welcome, everybody. It's the White Bronco Show. Welcome to the White Bronco Show with your host, Tommy Marks. I'm Aaron Bendersky. You can find us on Twitter at, at White Bronco Show. Tommy is at Uncle Tio's Ninos. I am at Big Happy Trees. And we would love to welcome our guest tonight, Joe Belaska. Hey, guys. Welcome, Joe. Welcome. Uh, if you couldn't tell by that intro, it's kind of a mafia-esque gangster song. Mm-hmm. And we keep it gangster around here. And um, We suffer from delusions here yeah, at the White Bronco show. Yeah, uh, we, you know, but uh, we, we keep it gangster, and we know that you have some gangster-esque comedy stories from uh, Old School Vegas, right? Yeah, uh, Riviera Hotel Comedy Club. That's what I'm talking about. The, the old school casinos, you know the, the bookers are dirty. We're going to get into those stories, but first <laughs> – I mean, There's going to be a hit. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, you're gonna get killed for this, but I'm telling you. let's let's hear about um, how you started in comedy because you're the first person on this show um, who's from Detroit. So let's let's hear about that. I'm the oldest guy in the show. <laughs> <laughs> you guys weren't born when I started doing comedy. What year were you born? We're I, we're both in '87. '87. Okay, I started doing stand up in '79. Okay, wow. can you believe that? How'd you get into comedy? Um, saw an ad in the paper, a local comedy club, the Comedy Store, Mark Ridley's Comedy Store. Uh, they had an open mic night, headed out there, and my uh, little gang was uh, Tim Allen, Dave Coulier from Full House, Howie Hell Mandel, yeah. Howie Mandel. Dave Coulier from Full House. Yes, Did sir. you guys know that Alanis Morissette wrote Jagged Little Pill about Dave Coulier? I heard that. All of those yeah, songs. That's true. I, I only just found out about that. Anyway, he, he, broke, her, he broke her heart. Oh, Wait, so there was a comedy store in Detroit? Comedy store, it was called uh, – actually, Mark Ridley's Comedy Cast, my bad. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. So you started and you did the open mic first time and it went great? It was horrible. <laughs> it was really bad. But you got the bug. I got the bug and I kept going and uh, worked my way up the ladder. wasn't getting enough stage time, so I uh, opened my own co- comedy club. So. What was it called? Ah, Joey's Comedy Club, of course. Uh-huh. Nice, nice. What, what year was this? This is uh, when I opened my club up, 88. 88. Okay. 19. Nice. 88. <laughs> that, that real, that golden era of American history, uh, that, as Adam Carolla likes to say, mid Coke pre AIDS, <laughs> right, right in the, uh, right in the groove of a uh, American oh, social funny. scene. All right, so tell us about running a comedy club in Detroit. Did you hey. ever get robbed? Oh <laughs> no, no. Detroit's not that bad. I mean, my uh, my wife and I are from Michigan, and there's some nice places. But uh, I actually had the club uh, in a suburb, so it was pretty safe. Yeah. So. Okay. And then we had actually three clubs. We had one in. Uh, you wouldn't know it, but Livonia, Michigan, we had one in Dearborn, Michigan, where Henry Ford was, and uh, we had one near the airport. So anyway, three clubs running. We were running big names through the club. Tim Allen, all the guys, Bob, Bobby Collins, I don't know, if you know any of these guys. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Bobcat Goldthwaite. Uh, yes. Yeah, oh, okay. the Bobcat. He's uh he's directing a lot of stuff now. He is. He's off the off the screen, but he's directing a lot. Yeah, and he's he's hilarious. He's a funny guy. Directed Windy City Heat. Windy City Heat. Oh, really? Yeah. Excellent. That was Bobcat. Excellent. That's the Bobcat. Um, all right. So you had three clubs. When did you start doing Vegas? Uh, the beauty of having your own clubs is you bring in some big names and you start networking. And right. I, there was a guy named Kip Adada. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Kip Adada. He did The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And uh, I kept begging him to do Vegas. And he said, I'll tell you what, go up on stage, do 10 minutes, be clean, don't talk to the audience. And then we'll talk after the show. And I, I nailed it. He came back. He goes, you're going to be doing the Riviera Hotel Comedy Club. And I did it three wow. times after that. So. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's hear some some mobster uh, old school hotel casino stories. Uh, I worked with a guy uh, named <laughs> Johnny Dark. He's still kicking. And uh, Johnny worked with the Rat Pack. Oh, my God. Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and a lot of the Do guys. Do I see a picture with and you, that, and, that, you and Tupac? Yeah, that's me when I was uh, darker. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, but that's Johnny Dark in the pick there, and uh, so Johnny and I would go work a couple of shows, and we'd walk around the strip, and then he'd point out where you know so and so was buried, and <laughs> yeah, they built uh, he, the hotel. He knew where all the holes are. So, he, he, well, they built a hotel over it, so you never find the guy. So, right? <laughs> did you ever get stiffed in Vegas? Because if you get stiffed at that time in Vegas, you probably just have to bite the bullet, right, and be like, ah. It's either that or you know six feet under. No, no, I've always like I always 
played to the rules. And these guys were serious, man. I'm not kidding you. Matter of fact, uh, what what's uh, what is this rated R or G or no? You can say whatever you want. You can say, say fuck, kind, yep. hairy nuts. All right, gotcha. So. <laughs> You know what the last name here is Belaska, right? So uh, I did like one show at the Riv, and uh, my mobster connection there said uh, to one of my mutual friends, "So how's that fucking Joey Belinsky kid doing out there?" <laughs> okay, yeah, I couldn't even pronounce my last name. He said he was on The Sopranos. I can't think of the guy's name. Big dude looks like Fred Flintstone. He played pussy. I know exactly. He, his character was big pussy. I don't remember his. What's his name? Oh, Mark is yelling from the other room. What is I can't it? Hear Joe what Pastore? Saying. Joe Pastore. No, 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 no. No, we'll figure it out. He's, um, man, I'll huh. tell you what. But I know which guy you're talking about, but that's the other guy. Or did he, oh, he played Bobby. He played Bobby, the, the driver for uh, for the uncle. Wait, wait, but regardless, he's uh, he's he's actually connected, <laughs> and he was on The Sopranos. For real. That makes that show so for much real. better. For real. Even they call better. that the triple threat. Hey, man, I go work with guys out there on uh, Long Island. And uh, you meet the real boys out there. You know, you get the handshake. It, they, they put one hand in and one over. Hey, it's, you're okay. is Belaska, what, what is that, Polish? Polish, yak shamash. Have you seen the movie um, <laughs> Year of the Dragon? I, I didn't get it, but With I saw Mickey it. With Mickey Rohr? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's the, the saying in that is you can never bribe a Polak. Oh, yeah. Is that true? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> my wife's sitting here in the studio. We'll ask her. <laughs> hey, so. we, we had a we had a crazy-ass comedian come in here, and he asked us a question uh, that I've like kind of been obsessing over. And now I like to ask other comedians it. But he was like, who who do you guys – like if you had to compare your – it's a weird question. But if you had to compare your comedy to one movie, what would it be? And his answer was Sylvester Stallone's arm wrestling movie, Over the Top. Oh, my. And I was like, damn, that's a good answer. And so I've been thinking about it, and my answer now is Captain Phillips because my shows are kind of like a hostage situation. You know what I mean? Like no one could leave. Everyone's uncomfortable. And you always have to say, I am the captain now. Yeah, and I feel like I got yellow teeth and an AK, and I'm just fucking screaming at the top of my lungs. But And, and what was that guy that was starring in the movie? He was a cab driver from New York. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, that guy that scared the heck out of uh... – Captain Phillips here, yeah. That that's an amazing movie. I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh my god, that's a that's a fucking crazy story. Yeah, minus he, panic room. It, it, you know what's weird about those guys? Yeah. They're on little boats and and they're going up on these up against these like giant giant freighters, right? And they just go up. It's so guerrilla style, and they just hook ladders on, and they don't have they don't they're not allowed like, at the time they weren't allowed to have weapons. So these guys are just hooking. That would be like me. Going up on a car on like a razor scooter, you know, and trying to like rob a car on a scooter. It's insane. They are and crazy, they, and they they fucking pull it off. They did. Sounds like the last time I got laid. Yeah, and <laughs> and uh, my my last girlfriend, I was kind of wild back in the day. She used to call me a white Somali pirate because I was just uh, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I don't know why she called me that. Was it? Well, she. I, I told her I had dreams of opening. Um, in Somalia, would... animal fighting's like legal. You can fight like bears versus tigers. Cheetahs like that. I'm like, I should open like a stadium. It's not because you insisted on heating the house with burning tires. <laughs> and so I have to, I have to ask about the title of the show. So is title this- of the show. Well, um, there's a few different reasons why. A, we're all big fans of OJ. Okay. Uh, maybe, B, maybe the biggest. I yeah, live right. uh, seriously less than a mile from the the house mm-hmm. where uh, Nicole and uh, Ron, Ron Gold were killed. Um, another reason is there's actually a Native American Indian. Um, she's an albino Native American Indian, and she's a prostitute up in Washington State. And um, they call her the White Bronco. So we kind of named it. It's basically named after her. It's an homage. Uh, an homage yeah, it's to an some homage, of our favorite yeah, people. An homage yeah. to her. And um, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, so it's it's a good name. But mostly, mostly everyone here is big big supporters of OJ. You know, and we didn't want to call it Charles Manson Radio. Oh, I would like that. It's a beautiful room. But the the thing is, is it, when you're in the white Bronco, you can you're guilty, right? You're you're in it. Everyone knows. Everyone's watching you. But you're guilty, so you might as well just say whatever you got to say. Keep and, driving. Keep driving yeah. slow. Yeah, Grab and, a highway. and and we usually we should do this with you, Joe. We do this with guests. Uh, we didn't tell you we we're gonna do this, but. We do this uh, kind of improv game. Sure. Um, so I'll play. Let, let, this is what we're gonna do. All right. Let's set up um, the scene a little let's bit. Let's set up the scene. Um, last night, me and Aaron, um, we were drinking. We were having fun with this woman. Um, we started playing a little game of 
Uh, well, Cosby we, Roulette, where we got yeah. pills. You don't know which one's coming out of the bottle, right? One thing leads to another. Some are placebos and some are, some are old school quaaludes that we found, yeah. we found a, a stash of in my, uh, uh, my shoe dad's boxes. old drawer. Yeah. Um, so some are duds and some are, uh, and some are winners. And, and eventually look, one thing led to another and an orgy broke out as they tend to do during a game of Cosby Roulette. Yeah. And let's say both of our fluids are still uh, – we jizz, We both jizzed in a gel. Sorry, but okay. So this is. This I'd like is to point situation. out I went second. Okay, regardless of that, it's a sensitive situation because we have this woman and she j- she died. She, okay? had, she, she died ended up overdosing. Sleep. Yeah, she overdosed. We go through her stuff. She's an undercover cop. So we got a shower curtain. We wrapped her up. It's a sensitive situation because we've both left our sperm inside of her. We don't know what to do. Now you're, we have to dispose. You're of our the body. only other person we can go to. What's your first move in advising us to get rid of this body? You're not really from California, so you might not have the best advice, but you're an old school kind of gangster guy. So let's let's hear it. What do you got for us? She's mm. in the trunk. We're, let's go. We're in a panic. You know, we, right. we got her wrapped up. What do we do? Take her to Macy's, sell her, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. They can use her in a shower somewhere in Asia. I, you know about Fernando who buys bodies at Macy's too? I can't believe that I didn't think of that. <laughs> But you know what? I know for a fact that Fernando is in Miami this weekend, so that is out. It's out, eh? <laughs> well, let's see, boys. What I would do is uh, they're Ow. building a new hotel where the Riviera Hotel was. So you'd uh, you'd cross state lines with her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's sort of a risk, but uh, the drive to Vegas isn't bad. It's no big deal. It's yeah. No big deal. Put her under the car. <laughs> No problem. That's a, that's a good idea. I so it. so that is I've very. I've never thought about it. that's like outside the box thinking, man. That's like Mexico smuggling shit right there. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. You could we can in Bernie's kind of pretend like she's a, alive on the drive up. Yeah, man. But what? that's that. I like that answer. When the building goes up, that's it. That's 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 mafia. That's why we have the mafia intro song. I love that shit. Good stuff. It's <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> So so uh, tell us tell okay. us about your plans now. You're you're out here, you're in California, and you're gonna make things happen with comedy. Yeah, I just want to get it going again. You know, there seems to be uh, a trend with comedy. You know, in the eighties it was big and late eighties, early nineties, and it seems like it's coming back. So uh, I think we need to get some clubs going here. Yeah, definitely. O- other than the improv, other than flappers, other than uh, the comedy store. We need some mom and pop operations. You you have a show this Saturday. At yeah. 8 p.m. and it's at the Sailing Club. Uh, the Aventura Sailing Club in Dana Point, and uh, happen to have if anybody gives a darn a phone number here 949-493-9493. Just call there and get some tickets. It's gonna be a great show. Lowell Sanders, the guy I worked with in Michigan, is gonna be the headliner. Yeah, and he's he's a funny guy. Just heard him on Damarera's podcast. Yeah. He's, Very funny he's to me. Hilarious. The White Bronco show will be there in full effect, representing signing um, autographs, taking pictures. If if you get a uh, room running up here, or maybe a club, uh, what are the odds of getting Dave Coulier? Possible, probably okay. high, probably because pretty high. I'm telling you right now, I will pack that bitch out anywhere in Southern California yeah. if Dave Coulier is on. I don't the know how busy the Coulier is. Not Dude, very, you know? not very. I, uh, no. I think he'd probably jump at the opportunity. I wish I, I could grow hair like him. You know what I mean? But I can't pull it off in the front. Just yeah. that, that curly. <laughs> last extra, time I saw extra him, love in the back. Last time I saw him working, he was uh, hosting like an America's Got Talent knockoff show. Yeah, somewhere Canada? deep in the cable. Yeah, in the cable guy. Yeah, he's. I think uh, the days are over. You think the residuals ran out for for Full House yet? No, I think he's still, and the still, he's still still a wealthy man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, um, he, he's they're coming back on Netflix. They're doing uh, Fuller House or I, I or, heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Fuller House. Is are both true? twins? Are both twins going to be part of it? That's <laughs> funny. The only the only people that haven't signed on yet are the Olsons. Hmm. <laughs> well, I know what I won't be some, masturbating some, to unless they are on. Well, can I tell you when I was like, your age, those were some ugly looking little twins. I'll tell you what. Ugly, I always knew they'd ugly. be hot. They, I mean, you knew they would be, right? Oh, I don't know man. what they grew into, but they, they, right. they still look like they got a lot of growing to do. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. I just uh, kind of strange, alien looking. I like a hungry looking girl. Only, oh. That's all. That's all. I'm only thing say. that could save them is some fake tits right now. You know, like <laughs> a couple pounds. Um, so, so also in in the midst of you were doing comedy, um, then you know you got into becoming a pilot. Mm-hmm. What made you want to do that? Money. Money, money. Yeah, there's good, there's damn good, money damn good that. reason, right? You yeah. didn't see a World War II documentary on Kamikaze or, pilots. Yeah, and I, it inspired you. Yeah, every time right. I watch Top Gun, 
I, uh, I right after I Google flight schools. And yeah. I'm like trying to fucking fly a plane. I swear to God, it had nothing yeah. to do with Top Gun. No, it had more to do with uh, my dad was a Navy pilot. You know, okay. I, I got, uh, I got, okay. I got, got it from dad, and uh, it paid money. So I went b- down both roads, comedy and aviation. And aviation paid the money, and comedy actually, you comedy know, pays your soul. Well, yes, but I, I can tell you, my first year flying for the airline business, I made seventeen thousand dollars, and I made sixty four thousand that year doing stand up. So wow. I was doing pretty good. Shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because I had my own club. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I booked me all the time. <laughs> <coughs> I was there every Thursday through Saturday, no matter what. You had what. three clubs. You could book yourself at a different club. I actually every rotated around. Every weekend. Yes, I did. It's who, perfect. Who were, who were some of your favorite people that came through the clubs? Like well, your, your personal favorites. Oh, God. Kevin James. Uh, you know, I said, I don't know if you guys know Bobby Collins. Uh, Bobcat Goldthwait, Tim Allen, um, some of the old school guys. My wife's here in the studio. She's actually related to Milton Berle, for real. Wow. Oh, Milton nice. Berle is her real Royalty. Uncle Milty. Royalty. And, uh, yeah, I met uh, Milton Berle, Steve Allen, who was before Johnny Carson. Um, God, man, I met everybody. I, I, yeah. Joe, as a pilot, getting back to the air for a mm-hmm. second, seen anything weird? Aliens late at night? Uh, chemtrail uh, theories, but it, you, you're nodding at aliens. Seen anything strange or un- inexplicable? I'm a believer, and uh, nice. I, yeah, I really believe. But uh, one night, I'll tell you, when I was about again your guys' age, about in the late 20s, we were flying from uh, Washington State to Utah late at night, and I was what's called a flight engineer. In the old days, they had three pilots. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're sitting in the middle of the night, and from right to left behind us was a fireball just going right across. We all wow. crapped our pants. We did, for real. And we called air traffic control. No reports of anything on radar. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm telling you. I remember wow. that. I, I never forgot that. And uh, I, I, I've i seen some things up there. And uh, in the old days, pilots couldn't report them because they tell you you're crazy. Out of your mind. Nowadays, we, we make reports. Fast, fast moving. Uh Cigar, uh, cigar shaped unexplained, and, unexplained. I watch yeah. Ancient Aliens. I'm a believer. I yeah. believe in it. It's all, it's all aliens, man. Yeah. I read a book called Area 51. Oh yeah. And that is like you learn like just like the history of like the U2 rocket and mm-hmm. all the engineering and how. I mean, well, it's, I got something for you guys. Think about this. After World War II, World War II, they're flying propeller-driven airplanes, right? Right. A few years later, the U2 spy plane is flying. Where the hell did they get that technology in five years? I really think that Roswell thing happened. I really think there was a crash there. I think they got the technology. Well, the 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 theory on that is at the end of World War II, there was the scientists, the, the paperclip oh, scientists. from Germany. Some of them were kidnapped and went to Russia, and some of them went on like pensions to Russia, and then some of them came oh, we to the got, U.S. Oh, yeah, Von Braun. Yeah. We got him. So yeah. the, the, the Cold War was like a race between German scientists That's true. on both sides. That's true. And they say that what crashed in Roswell was these two German brothers were engineering like a bell-shaped thing, and that this is what the kind of the mm-hmm. theory is, that it was a German plane that crashed, but the men inside it were genetically engineered human beings that they started that in Nazi Germany, and then they continued it in Russia, that were engineered – human beings that could go at higher altitudes. So that's why they were small with big heads and like fucked up looking and inside of the um the the ships that crashed in Roswell there's like Russian writing and stuff. That's I mean I don't know if that's the truth. That's a fucking No, no. Theory. They're, they're, well the the Germans were doing a lot of horrible things experimenting with people in World War 2. So I think that's possible. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. and it's it's scary to think like some of those fucking people went to Russia and they can still be practicing like in the the most remote part of Russia, like yeah, it's well, fucking weird. Well, think about the guy that you know developed some of the jet jets for the Germans as became our uh, Apollo guy. Uh, bon bon. Um, you do you know what's interesting about all that? Why, uh, this is what I ask people: Why do you think the Germans were so fuck? Like, how were the fucking Germans so smart? Like, why were they so advanced? And this is the the answer: Why were were was Germany in North Africa during World War Two? Oh, fuel. Fuel and they 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 found stuff and this is this is what I've I've heard they found the blueprints for the U two rocket in a, a cave and they took that information all those Germans and then they went back and they destroyed it and it was from like and and in the it was like writings on the wall you know and it was blueprints for U two rockets and it was just like stories you know they were so advanced and they lost the war 
Yeah. You know, right? So I think if there has ever been aliens here or whatever, and whatever they had left behind, I think the somehow the smartest people in Germany found it at some point. Okay. I, before World War II. I, as a child, every time I would uh, lose a tooth, um, I would put it under my pillow. <laughs> and um, every oh. morning after I had done that, there would be 5 to $10 lying wow. there where that's the tooth was. Money. And if, if, that's, if that isn't evidence that, that aliens are Yeah, honest, right? Well, guess what? I used to get 25 cents, so something's wrong with that. <laughs> what the hell? And your parents were bullshit. Yeah, right? <laughs> I had all my teeth pulled like two separate times. Just so they could they avoid so it. so fucked up, yeah. Just so they could avoid it. I had braces when I was seven. Good for you. You got nice First teeth. Kids. Like, got oh, nice honey, teeth. the dentist took all of your teeth, so you can't give it to the <laughs> to the tooth fairy. I see the angle they were playing. All right. Smart. Hey, um, have you ever seen a, a fight at a comedy club or any? Yeah, actually, I got hit in the head with a beer bottle. What, where was this? At my club. What what what, what happened? But you should have <laughs> seen the beer bottle. Well, <laughs> it was my beer bottle. No, they had, uh, you know, you know how it is on stage: bright lights, dark room, and. Uh, just some guy heckling back there, and um, boom, yeah, man, came, mm. came direct down the down the middle. Did you? And what did you was have retribution? Or? Retribution was I didn't even know who the hell the guy was, and uh, yeah, so we kept going, just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, we we had a guy tell a story of how he was I don't know if it's true or not, but he was choking someone who rushed the stage, and then he just kept doing jokes in one hand. That's pretty good. Huh, yeah, it sounds guy. it sounds very believable now that now that I think about uh, in retrospect. <laughs> It's pretty, Some of the things I, I like that. I I like that story. Was it? Yeah, man. I, uh, what what I other? Had him in a chokehold. What other What other know. states uh, have you like performing in? Did you do anything in Washington State? Oh, Minneapolis, uh, California, um, Connecticut. Uh, I did uh, Dangerfields in New York City. Oh, uh, awesome! Did an audition. I met Rodney. And, well, uh, tell Tell us about that. Um, did about ten minute guest set, and uh, he came up, shook my hand, said, "Nice job, kid. Keep up the good work." Yeah. Did you, uh, did you smoke a joint with him or anything? Yeah, he smoked a lot of pot. Yeah, Ronnie Dangerfield. Yeah, every- yeah, my my friend Joey Cola tells a good story about him, sitting there with his bathrobe on and his junk hanging out, and uh, smoking a joint, and he sends um one of the kids out to get a couple of pizza pies, you know, and there's a cop in the room. The cop keeps telling him, "Hey." Rodney you shouldn't be doing that here. He says, "Hey, fuck you! It's my club." Yeah, yeah like that, you know. But they eat the pizza pie, smoke a little weed, you know, and they had a good time over there. Yeah, Rodney was uh, not as classy looking uh, off stage. You know what I mean? He looked great <laughs> on stage, but uh, a lot of these guys, and that's that's something about comedians. You know that, right? Yeah, what's behind the curtains is a lot different from what's in front of the curtain, right? Yeah, no, they're all stand-up individuals. Yeah, right. Whole, wholesome <laughs> backgrounds yeah. and not a lot of problems or skeletons in no, the closet no, or anything no, like that. No, no, no. Emotionally sound. Not no. addicted to paying for hand jobs. No, yeah. no, no definitely guys. not. It just reminded <laughs> me of, yeah, yeah, no skeletons in the closet. I, uh, I, I used to work with Ralphie May on his podcast. Yeah. And he told us um, a long, long time ago when, when uh, uh, Rodney would come to town, Ralphie would like get him like – Four hundred dollars worth of weed, and Rodney would give him like nine hundred bucks. Oh, keep the change, you know, like yeah, right? super oh, fucking yeah. nice. Yeah, and that's I mean that's that's cool for someone who wasn't well, making shit. Well, he had a lot shit. of money. Well, Rodney well, had yeah. the money, yeah, yeah. Sure. And you know he would do those specials, and a lot of people broke from uh, his specials. I think they were back in the early nineties, late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. yeah, those are yeah. those are cool. Oh, it's good stuff. Now go pull up some YouTube stuff, Johnny Carson with uh, Rodney on. How, so how'd you get the Dangerfield spot? Like um, just, just you know, it was like you people. guys. You know, you just keep banging down doors, knocking on doors, and bothering people. And uh, I just uh, kept bugging people. I finally got on stage there. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we've never done this on the show, but uh, we're gonna do. Uh, we're just gonna cover celebrity birthdays real quick. Oh my! I, oh, nice. I, I didn't tell you guys uh, whose birthdays it was. I just want to see if you guys know these people. But first one is. Uh, Happy birthday, Danny Glover. Okay. Oh, yeah, Danny right. Glover. How old Murtaugh, is Danny Glover? baby. I don't know, but uh, that's that's number one on the list. Fuck yeah. He's got to be. He's got to be about sixty-five. God damn it, Rick. Yeah. Um. Second one, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. Oh, you know him? heartbreak. Don't know him. Kid. But uh, uh, he's uh, yeah, he's a wrestler. He was the the heartbreak. He's kid. in the first Hell in the Cell match. And, yeah. Uh, he looks like a porn star. Heavyweight world champion. It always point. had a ponytail, but. Can throw the sickest fucking it's part of DX roundhouse kick you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, the sweet chin music. Yeah, so he's a he's a hero to to a young generation of. He won fans. A, he won a Royal Rumble once by uh, holding on to the top rope as uh, everyone thought that he was clotheslined over by Bret the Hitman Hart. 
but he was hanging from the top rope. Brett the Hitman Hart celebrating his victory. Shawn Michaels pulling himself back into the ring and tossing Brett the Hitman Hart out to win Did, the Royal Rumble. Didn't he moon him? He pulled his pants down at one point? Or it was the other way around. He's like climbing the ladder and he got mooned and we're just like, what? Oh my. It was... You know, my pot addled mind uh, can't. <laughs> Can't really make out the details at this point, but uh, La- all right. professional wrestling. La- last people. birthday is uh, happy birthday, Keith Sweat. You guys know Keith Sweat? Uh, now I'm getting old. Yes, Keith Sweat. Uh, oh, he's, he's a sexy early, R&B early singer. Early 90s R&B yeah. singer. And, uh, I, you know, one time I didn't have a plan for uh, Valentine's Day with this girl, and there was a Keith Sweat concert at the Staples Center. So I was like, okay, you know, I might as well do it. Went to it. Only fucking white people there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we were accepted and we had fun. And there's some fucking old school players there. White shoes. Or, like, white suits with fucking, like, red top. It, like, it's like only white people and Fat Tuesday was also there in the back. <laughs> right. She was oh, Keith Sweat's personal. Oh, fat, um, this show um, is sponsored by a prostitute. Her name's Fat Tuesday. <laughs> She's out there. Yeah. Keith Sweat used to be a client of mine. Fucking and sucking dicks for the show. Keep us alive. So um, shout out to Fat Tuesday. If you're interested in her uh, services in Pomona, contact the show. Um, Gary and Holt, you can find her there almost yeah. every evening. <laughs> but I, I, I like the I like the the birthday part of it. Um, my birthday actually just passed. It was uh, July 16th. And you survived. Yeah, and I survived. And I, I actually did my first stand-up show ever the day after my birthday. So I kind of like consider myself – like since I started doing comedy, it's been three years old. You know, so I'm like three. I just think three years old. That's the time I'm like just only time I'm thinking forward from that time. And what what is July I, 16th? You would like a I cancer? Consider myself Jesus. Cancer. 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 All right. And one time there was um this barista that my aunt was really good friends with, and she had breast cancer. She survived it, and then she got cancer in her back, and um and didn't survive. Well, that. she had it, and uh my aunt was telling my aunt was gonna originally hook me up with her. But then she got the cancer and that, and I told her, well, um, if she wants a little cancer in her stomach, uh, tell her my birthday's in July. Oh, my God. And uh, (laughs) it's fucked up because that girl actually died. Oh, that Mm. is bad. Yeah, so it gets real dark. That shit's not even funny anymore. No, no, no. I can't do uh, that anymore. That's my – yeah. No, it's hilarious. Yeah, that's that's my cancer joke. (laughs) (laughs) You're killing me. (laughs) Or you killed her. Uh, Fuck, I know. Okay, all right. Why did did they – why did little Jimmy's uh, bir- why did they hold uh, Christmas in July for little Jimmy? Because he has leukemia. I fucked it up. Man. Oh, oh, I messed it up. I messed it up. Um, Should I just tell you about my gay midget <laughs> friend that came out of the cupboard? Will that make somebody laugh around here? Um. All right. So wait. One more time. Your show is this Saturday. In July. Uh. What is it? Twenty fifth Saturday night. Yeah. yeah July twenty fifth mm-hmm. at the Sailing Club in Dana Point. Dana Point. Okay. Yeah, man. We got we got some Orange County listeners, so we'll we'll get out there. We're gonna make it down, and yeah. you have uh, Lowell Sander, Sanders open up for you. Yeah, a guy named uh, Stanley Allman will be featuring, and I'll be hosting, and uh, maybe we'll see you kids down there. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely be making out. Um, uh, anything anything else you want to plug? I used or, to go did you just hunting. say you two will be making out? Yeah, we'll be making out. <laughs> it's not gonna be any different from any other night of the week. I used to go cougar hunting in Dana Point. There, I don't know if it's oh. Dana Point or Laguna Beach, uh, at the at the White House. At the white, and then across the street. No, no, no. What is the it? White House, and then but the, what's the place across the street? The quiet from the white woman. Acro- that's in uh, Corona del Mar, right? No, no. Do you have any success stories? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. Well, you're you're friendly with the silicon, I take it. I mean, it's fun, but there's there there comes a point like when you once you graduate from the the Fox Fire and you go like, what's after this? And then you go into that world for a little while, which. Like 2 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon in Laguna Beach is a really, really good time. And I spent I spent a, f- a few good weeks or months with uh, one of my buddies going there every Sunday. But you really start to question your motives and your, like, just your life after, I, I after figured, a few of those weekends. These women are all rich. You should be trying to get them pregnant, dude. <sighs> you, weren't, you struck out. That's what it sounds like to me. They're rich. They're older and they're crafty. And uh, right. they know why they're there and they know why you're there. <laughs> and they, they'll break you down. They'll break you down harder than any prison warden could uh if you give them the chance and they'll they'll leave you feeling raped (laughs) 
Well, I think that's a that's a good point to uh, wrap up the show, Joe. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks, Look forward to having you back probably let's, in the let's future. Let's open a full time comedy club in Orange yeah, County. Yeah, we're gonna get something let's going Orange County for Orange County, i.e. in L.A. Let's do it. White Bronco Show. We'll see you next week. All right. Check it out, though.